Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and today I'm here with Trevor Young. Hi Trevor. Hi Joanna, how are you? I'm good. So Trevor is an author, a speaker, a consultant, a startup entrepreneur and his new book is called Micro Domination, how to leverage social media and content marketing to build a mini business empire around your personal brand. Lots of... Is that the world's, the world's <laughs> yeah. longest subtitle? So it, I was going to say it's kind of a hot button subtitle isn't it? It's got loads of good words in there. Yeah, and it's 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 something that probably the the title was the easy one to come up with, but the subtitle. So that's if you can see that oh, you can yeah. s it's strobing a bit, but it's in the design. It takes up the whole cover of the, the book, which cover. is quite unusual. But uh, in our in this space and marketing, uh, there's a trend towards these very long um, t subtitles. There's, there are ones longer than that. That's true and I actually have a post on my site about uh, metadata and keywords and how important it is in, in subtitles so that fits in totally. I'll link to that in the show <laughs> notes. But um, let's start by you just giving us a little bit about your background and you know how you came to write a book about this. You know, Give us the, the potted history. Uh, very potted although uh, journalist by profession many too many years ago um, and uh, then moved into public relations. So I was in, been in PR for probably 20 years. So going from journalism to PR was quite an easy thing in those years because it was a lot about publicity so and newsletter writing. So the writing side has been uh, omnipresent, um, even as a, as a consultant. So I've worked with a number of the uh, big multinational agencies. I've run my own for probably 12, 13 years at that time. Um, and so big and small, working on massive clients, big global brands, working on startups and individuals. So mm. right across mm. the board. Started uh, blogging in 2007, um, got into Twitter and social media on, in the same year and uh, just immersed myself. And I came at it because I was a PR person, looked overseas, saw our industry changing and that's really why I got into it was really to advise clients and just get my feet wet and then little did I know that it you know, going down that path has, has taken me down many through many different doors and many different opportunities. And uh, I pop out, I pop out the end with a with a book, and now I'm a professional speaker and trainer and coach and yeah, well, and uh, all that's of that stuff. It is interesting and I think, you know, obviously your book is written both for people but it's based on your own journey and indeed my journey and we were just talking before the call about how our lives have changed since you were on the show about two years ago, um, you know, so and both of us have kind of gone through this about, and we, I think we both have a mini business empire now, wouldn't you say? <laughs> well, it kind of looks at it when I look at all the various arms, but uh, I don't know about the empire bit yet. But it's, oh, it's your words, mate. It's okay, your word. <laughs> a lot of moving parts, which is good. But That's you're right. Funny. It was um, when I started looking at the people that I was I was following and uh, and reading and watching, and and I was looking at my own journey going through that. I think what the book, well, what I've really tried to do with the book is join a lot of the dots of this this trend that I was seeing um, and and really just, you know, also looking at ways of how people can, I know the words used a lot now is follow your passion and your purpose, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there who aren't happy uh, in what they do in their jobs and I read some statistic of something like some incredible amount of people um, are, are looking for jobs or changing work right now. So there's a lot of unhappiness there. So. And a, and a subtext there is that about following your own path as well. Yeah, exactly, and we're lucky to be able to do that. But let's um, let's go into the book. So, um, I wanted to ask first of all. There's a, a phrase that you use, a you know, a, a keyword which is micro maven, and it's not in your subtitle. It's a it's a new word. Well, I've always loved the word maven since um, since uh, Malcolm Gladwell days, and he, he probably popularised the word. Uh, I wanted to start a business with it in and all these, I've got a couple of friends who were really into words and language and everything. I said, what's a maven, you know? And I, so I've stayed away from the name and, uh, um, but then it sort of popped up again. So I, what I've tried to do is I guess package it and um, by giving a title like micro mavens and giving them a term and, and showing what these characteristics of this new, new type of entrepreneur are, that's when people can sort of grasp it. 
Um, so I think the packaging of something when you've got an idea and you're bringing disparate areas in and joining the dots, it's really important to, mm. to give it a name. I like it, Malcolm Gladwell did with The Tipping Point, not saying that this book's in the same vein, but <laughs> that packaging of seeing a concept and packaging it up for people. Yeah. Um, so The Micro Maven is really a, uh, they're a, they're a, um, a really a creative entrepreneur who I always say they leverage the internet for, um, you know, to, to build a, a platform and often that platform is now on a global basis. Um, they grow a platform for their, their um, personal brand and once they build their, their personal brand and their reputation, then they're starting to take it up a notch and, and, and build um, sustainable businesses, that's the mini empire side of things, mm -hmm. uh, with multiple streams of income. Um, like yourself with all the various different arms, you know, the speaking and, and the, uh, the courses and that sort of thing. Um, and I think the, the final part of the puzzle is, is that lifestyle element, which is another dimension. Um, some of the people that I talk, talk about, they're travelling probably 80 or 90% of the time, mm -hmm. still running significantly sized businesses while travelling. So it's the four cornerstones are um, to develop your platform, and build your brand, your personal brand, grow your business and then live your dream, which is that flexibility of having a, a work that fits into your lifestyle, not necessarily the other way around. Mm, no, fantastic. And then out of that, I want to ask about branding. I mean, platform we do on this show quite a lot, so we're going to, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll come back to a little bit of that. But the personal branding is something that I know a lot of authors struggle with. And um, especially when, you know, for example, I write nonfiction and now I'm writing thrillers, so I've got two kind of brand names. One is J.F. Penn for my fiction and one is Joanna Penn as a speaker, a non-fiction author, blogger type of thing. So I've kind of got two personal brands two websites, um, two look and feels, you know, one's in colour, one's black and white. So I, I created these two brands, but many people struggle with actually creating these brands. So can you give us some tips for how people can nail that down? Firstly, you're a masochist for doing that. <laughs> uh, it, it's challenging, but when if, you, if you're, you're staked out and you know what you're wanting to do, that's good. Um, well, the first thing to do about a brand is on one hand, you don't kind of, I guess, Creates probably not the right word. Um, it's you have a brand whether you like it or not. So, what people think about you, your reputation with others, that's your brand. So, Jeff Bezos, uh, who runs everyone will know, runs Amazon. Uh, he's got a saying: your your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. And so, that's very important. So, you, everyone, and particularly the more you go into the public eye the more people know about your brand. So whatever their experience of you is, whether they've listened to you on a podcast, um, read your blog, seen you speak, met you at a function, that's the upshot of, of um, or met you at a book signing in a, in a, uh, a big bookstore. That's their, um, their, their take on your brand. So what a person can do if you're a public figure, and authors are public figures, um, what, what you can do is make sure that you have a consistency. So you will need to think about, well, what do you want people to say about you when you're not in the room? So do you want to be seen as creative or insightful or intelligent or, you know, multi-layered, you know, a nice person, someone who's helpful? Whatever the you want yourself to be seen as, mm -hmm. you have to live that. And in days gone by, we had to live it in email and probably in the flesh and uh, on the phone, and they're all still important touch points, of course, but now we have the myriad of social media channels and the blogs and the podcasts, etc. So to, to have a consistency across the board on all of those things. Mm. So it's, it's just I, I don't think people have to, you know, go in and create this persona. I don't think that's right at all because ultimately that's not correct. And I think you see a lot of CEOs of uh, notorious for it, politicians, they've crafted this persona and what you see is not what you get. And then ultimately you might see another side of them and that it just doesn't gel. Um, you know, there might be someone who's quite hard, you know, hard-hitting CEO, but then they show the family side or there's just not a, a gelling of, of people's perceptions. And so personal branding is really people's experiences of you and how you can influence that. And and you can through all of those touch points. But it's a matter of being aware of it more than anything and then being consistent. Yeah, and also I think especially like you and I are, I guess, mature users of social media and blogging and things. And I, I, would, dare, I would dare to say that we judge people online based on their 
how their website looks, you know, how professional it is. You know, we can pretty much tell if it's a, a free blog versus someone who's taking it seriously and doing, a, you know, a professional job. So, I mean, how much do you think uh, as a PR person, because a lot of authors listening will be concerned about that type of thing. You know, if your book suddenly becomes, you know, gets some traction, whatever, and you get some hits on your site, you know, what are some of the things people need to be aware of that people will judge them on around this brand? Like, it's just... People arrive on your site and they judge you, right? They do, they do, and um, I better go back on my, my sites and fix a couple up now. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> um, it's, I guess, there's a couple of things. One is if you're a, maybe you're an author who's out there and quite crazy and quite you know a vibrant personality, but your website's really um, do it, dour, do it, um, and and quite boring and 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 the antithesis of what you come across in real life. That doesn't strike out well. And the same thing is if you're quite a, a conservative, if you're a conservative writer and quiet, but your website's really loud and, and boisterous, there's a disconnect there. So I think it, it needs to reflect um, your personality, I think is very important. Mm -hmm. um, the caveat there is if you've got a book only website, it needs to reflect the personality of the book and the and the characters in it if it's if it's fiction. Um, so you know, if someone's written a book and it's a non-fiction book, well, you'd hope that there is a consistency and a connection with the person who wrote it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd look at someone like Tom Peters, um, the uh, the management guru and um, best-selling author of many years, and and he's out there. He's a provocateur and all of that. So when he's on stage, he's he's an angry man, and um, and he really likes tweaking the nose of the establishment a bit, but. You see his books and he's got big type face and it's in your face and it's short bursts of provocations and, and that to me is perfect because that's consistent with what he's like um, in, on stage and, and other touch points in his other reading on his articles and then you read his book and you're not disappointed. Mm, no, I agree. And um, yeah, I do think that professionalism, and you're really talking about authenticity there as well. And I, I would also add that I have a lot of, fiction authors who listen to the show and many fiction authors use pseudonyms you can still be authentic within a pseudonym you can still show aspects of your character when you're doing this type of stuff can't you well i think you can i mean that that opens another layer too probably that's when you can create a persona because if uh, is it a pseudonym where you don't want people to know you too that's when you can have a bit of fun o often, obviously yeah <laughs> i might have a crack at that I, I, who knows i might already be You're doing it writer, I Trevor. <laughs> um, no, I think but sorry. if yeah, if you're not known and your pseudonym is to hide you and you can have a lot of fun, I think that's that takes it into a whole new ballpark. But but you're right. I mean, once again, if you're going to be out there and doing book signings and being interviewed under a pseudonym, still uh, the same rules apply. Mm. Right, I want to come back to your subtitle because, you know, like we said, it's got loads of buzzwords in. So um, I want you to differentiate between social media and content marketing because I know people get confused. So what is the difference between those two things? Yeah, well, I mean, content marketing is, is the rage at the moment, but it's more from a business perspective. So when you look at content marketing from a business perspective, it's people using um, content to to attract people to their to their website, to um, gain it, earn people's attention. So whether it's a, a podcast, a blog, um, even, I mean, even a tweet is is content, um, a video, an infographic, or whatever it is. To um, in, in a lot of the business space, it's actually to show your thought leadership and and help customers. So whatever they um, frequently asked questions are, you can create content around that, answer their questions, draw them in. Um, there's there's the SEO side of things as well. Then you get more into the thought leadership and that's about putting your opinions and your ideas out there, which could end up being in a book. Um, so that is really to, I think, to attract attention, to cut through to attract attention to the people that are interested in that topic. So what's the audience you're trying to reach and what's of interest to them and then creating content that will draw them in. And so it, it should be... Um, helpful, educational, inspiring, empowering, all of those words. Not everything at once, um, but if you tick a few of those boxes and it adds genuine value and it's not about you necessarily or your company or your business, and then that's when content's used. So um, that's when people say you, you're a business but you're also a publisher today and your own media channel. 
Um, and I always say, I, I, I usually draw the old Venn diagram and I have content creation on one side and social on social participation, I call it, on the other. And because social media itself is, is really just the, the tools, uh, things like the telephone, uh, social media marketing is using those tools for marketing purposes. Um, obviously, a lot of people use social media not for marketing purposes as well. But, you know, you can be a social participator and by that, that means tweeting, being out there helpful. Um, if it's a business, it's offering advice, customer care. Um, you know, if you're on um, LinkedIn, it's putting updates in, following other people's blogs, uh, dropping in comments, hat-tipping people on Twitter, um, liking things on Facebook. It's, it's actually participating in on the social web. Mm. And the content side is really creating your own content to share. Mm. So you can still share other people's content, um, but ultimately if you want to be seen as an original, you know, voice, yep. then you need to create in your own and there's nothing like uh, having a, you know, a blog post that will uh, uh, and hitting publish to make sure you've got clarity of thought. And so so that the, the two work really ha well hand in hand. There's a, mm. there's a mm -hmm. social media guy called Jay Bear you may have heard of mm -hmm. and Jay talks about, I love his line, he says the same thing that I'm talking about but he says it in a much better way and he says that um, um, content is the fire and social media is gasoline mm. and, and I really like that. So where he says that, I put two circles together, content creation on one hand and the social participation on the other. So you're creating your content but the social media is your way of amplifying that and deploying that into other areas, getting it amplified mm. um, and then building that ecosystem and that community around you. So I think they work really hand in hand. They do um, work hand in hand. I, I mean, I go further on this and say that, con like you said, content marketing is your original creation. But I also think that content is what you own. So like this this podcast you and I kind of jointly own as something we've created together. It goes out on my feed, but if, if I, you know, iTunes disappears, if YouTube disappears, I still own that content and I can put it on the next the next tool. Now, the mistake I see a lot of people making, like this whole Facebook bandwagon, people started building their whole oh. life on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And that, if Facebook disappears, that whole thing disappears. So for me, it's very much about, and again, free blogs. You don't own a free blog. You have to own your own and own your own content. And then social is, as you say, sharing that. But if unless you create your own stuff and own it, you could just be disappeared at some point. Would, would you agree? Oh. I a hundred percent. I um, you know it worries me when I see quite big brands putting all their eggs in the Facebook mm. basket, and Facebook would change the rules just like that. Yeah, and they do. You know, <laughs> they do, and yeah. you don't own it. You, you know, you're renting that house. You want to own your own house and have a couple of rental properties in different parts of the country, <laughs> um, and 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 that they, that's your social embassies. They that's your LinkedIn and Twitter and that sort of thing. Very important. Um, but have your own home base that you own. And the other thing is if you're you, with the content side is if you create it, you put it out, it gets shared and shared and shared. It's your voice that's going out and attracting people. So mm -hmm. um, different, you know, once you go down the content route, depending on whether you're a business or not or what sort of thing you're trying to do, that's obviously going to change left, right and centre. But as a general rule, it's, 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 it's the thing that separates people you know, the real pros from the ones that the wannabes because, it, as you know, it takes time and effort to do this. Yes. Um, to, to, whether it's a podcast or writing a blog post, to put yourself out there, to go down that path, um, it sets you apart. And yeah. you're, opening, you're opening yourself up, but you're also attracting people to you who um, like your worldview, for example. If they share your worldview, you're going to attract them. Um, if you inspire them, entertain them, um, educate them, inform them, provoke them. Um, they're all they're all good things. It's better than being vanilla yeah. and unseen. Absolutely. And um, it's funny you mentioned the time thing there um, because, um, you know, as you obviously know and some others might, Google Reader is disappearing uh, in a few months. And so a lot of us are having to move all of our feeds, right, across to a new a new system. So I'm moving over to Feedly. And as I was doing it, I was going through all these feeds. Like I probably had 400 feeds. But what was interesting <laughs> was probably 100, 150 of those feeds were, were dead. 
you know so in terms of people and I've had that feed since I started blogging so 2008 you know I've been a adding new things to that and it, it just surprised me and I look back and there were some people that I remember like when I interviewed you two years ago there were other people around at that time those people have disappeared and you know but so some it, staying the distance isn't it really makes makes all the difference it's 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 getting momentum in the first place, mm -hmm. and then it's it's the marathon. So if I look at the micro mavens who I cover in the book, and some of these names might ring bells to people, some might not. Um, Chris Gillibo, they're all virtually all authors. A lot of them, Chris yeah. Gillibo, um, who you're probably aware of, Chris Brogan, um, Darren Rouse from Melbourne, who's pro blogger, um, Danielle Laporte, Marie Forleo. There's a, a stack of them, and then there's people that probably aren't as well known as mm -hmm. well, but they've been in it for a, the long haul. And you when know, you say and, long, it's internet long, like seven or eight years. Yeah, that's right. And there are dog years. That's 35 years. Yeah. You know what we're <laughs> um, but Chris Brogan, you know, he was even blogging before, almost before internet, right, if that was possible. But he's, he said it took him eight years to get his first 100 subscribers. Yeah, exactly. Um, and now he's got, you know, now he's, thousands of uh, subscribers, yeah. bestsellers. Um, he, he's a classic multi. Mo, he's a classic micro maven because he built the platform from scratch. Mm. Uh, you know, the, the micro mavens didn't have a TV show first or a radio program and weren't famous earlier. They've come from nowhere and they've built. Yeah. They've built. They've built. They've built this community of fans, and then they've just, they've started to build a business around their reputation and, and their personal and brand. Pretty much all of them got book deals off of their blogs and off of their platform as well. <laughs> Yeah, yep, that's, and, and that, that's the key. And then that propels them the next one on. So, yeah. you know, you need something before you get the book deal, although these days a lot are deciding to self-publish mm -hmm. because they have the, they have the um, audience. such a big platform. Yeah. Um, but then the book takes them more into media and then takes it to the next level again. Mm -hmm. So it's all of the, you know, it's all of these steps that, that mm -hmm. sort of, but it is, it's, it's take, doing something every day. Um, Darren Rouse tells the story when he did his first um, online course um, when he created that and he was doing it in something like 15 minute increments a day, mm -hmm. little by little by little by little and then he sold something like 70 grand, stand corrected, but about 70 grand's worth of sales in the first week. Yeah, absolutely. And he did it by doing, breaking it down and doing small chunks every day and, 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 and looking at content in that regard. Mm. Um, yeah, and I would, uh, again, there will be fiction people listening going, nah, nah, this is all about non-fiction. But I wanted yep. to, and, and at the moment there's actually a real backlash in the author community yep. about blogging. Um, there's been a number of posts saying, right, it's time to stop blogging, we need to spend time writing. And I flip-flop on this almost every day because I agree, <laughs> like my, fic my fiction site I hardly ever blog on. Like I don't blog on fiction, but I do a lot of interviews about my fiction. But... Um, I found that through building up my platform through my my you know through the creative pen through the podcast like meeting people like you actually there's been and I call it kind of social karma which is you know when you connect like this when you are you know like I'm promoting your book telling people about your book things without any expectation you you know how it works there's like it this becomes like a a relationship and like i've got my agent through relationships i got an amazon daily deal based on a personal relationship i've got something that i can't announce yet which i'm really excited about which i got You'll through at the end of the podcast we'll get yeah. <laughs> I, I got through a relationship i get speaking through a, a lot through personal yeah. recommendation so i could not have gone full time as an author entrepreneur without this platform. So, what do you think about this backlash? Yeah, uh, as you said, author entrepreneur. And you're probably aware of Guy Kawasaki's book, uh, Ape Author Publisher Entrepreneur, which is interesting. Um, but you're right. I, 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 I can understand where it's coming from. Um, when you know, when there's so much hype in one direction, you'll inevitably get the the backlash. I guess. Um, I, I'm just so dead set. Um, for it, but the reason is because you've got to be, you are the, if you're an author, you're a personal brand, whether you like it or not, you are a brand that people buy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, you've got to have that consistency and, and, and be known for something, but it, it's not just blogging, it doesn't necessarily have to be a blog. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are, there are authors out there that, that do a lot of podcasting. Some have done audio episodes of, 
instead of writing a book, they've done audio. Well, they have, have to have written it because then they Scott read it. Sigler. Scott Sigler is yeah. a big one in the, in the fiction That's right. space. Yeah. And I've heard of a couple of examples that are much smaller as well. And, and so that's a, an interesting way I would have thought to do it. But, you know, it, it, it obviously works mm. because all blogging and social, so content and the social, the two together, what it does is you've hit the nail on the head with relationships and relationships, uh, but you're attracting like minds and you're attracting people who like you for what you, your output. So... Um, you know, when you're creating a platform, you're trying to attract people who are of like mind that, that, that uh, build a community of fans, followers, supporters, enthusiasts, advocates of what it is you do, your thoughts, your works. That's it. That's, you know, there's the saying about the 1,000 true fans, which means a creative entrepreneur really only needs 1,000 hardcore true fans to have a very decent living. So it's, it's not the blog. And I think, you know, certainly in Australia, we have the, the blogging, the mummy blogging and blogging generally is on the rise and therefore you get the, the TV or um, uh, well, the press articles and the TV interviews, etc. about how these mummy bloggers are making millions, which they're not. Um, but, you know, people think and they, everyone gets besotted about the blog. The blog is still the conduit or the tool. Yeah. It's, it, it's the brand that people buy. It's mm. not the blog. The blog is a personification of your brand. So when people are thinking blogging, take it away, take the blog out of it and say, what are you trying to achieve as a personal brand? Mm -hmm. So maybe it is maybe it is just social media and interacting with people. Not everyone's going to be a customer. Not everyone's going to buy your book. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I had every follower buy my book, I'd be laughing. But mm -hmm. it's not the case. Um, and it's the same in business. People say, I'm only trying to reach people who are going to be my customers. No, you want to reach people, build relationships mm. with people who will um, share your content and support you and, and promote you and do all this sort of stuff. And so if you're going to have any degree of ripple effect and any degree of buzz about you, you need people online doing that. So it's great to start building them that community of genuine friendships and relationships before you need it, and it takes time. You can't just grow that overnight. It takes yeah. years. Exactly. It takes years. It does, and what's interesting now, you know, having, you know, both of you and I started in December 2008, so I'm coming up to five years this December. There's people who started blogs at the same time, and, you know, you would feel the same way. We are kind of peers in the market because we've grown up together in the market and and even just those relationships come from being aware of each other for years and you know just interacting and there's I think there's a lot the generosity I find is amazing that everyone is so generous with their time and helping each other and I love our I love our little community online it's brilliant yeah and the law of reciprocity is the other one, you mm. know, like it's you give without ex expectation of anything of receiving and helping mm. people and that builds it. But, you know, and, and whatever happens online, it comes off offline as well. So you go to conferences exactly. or you meet people or you go to meetups. And, and to me, the power of, on, of social is, is, is offline. Mm. Um, and, and the micro mavens that I talk about in the book, they know the power of getting out and, and, and pressing the flesh. So Chris Gillibo is, you know, on his book tour, he does um, every every um, state in, in the US and every province in Canada. Um, and then he goes, for his second book, he goes to every continent. You know, that that's a certain mindset to want to connect with people. So, you know, blogging is one thing. Connecting and building a community of, of, of supporters and advocates is another. The blog is a tool, albeit a, a very important one, if that's the way you decide to go. Gary Vaynerchuk didn't blog. He had a he had a video well, a video blog, but video he did blog, a, yeah. a video show. Mm -hmm. You know, he went from total unknown to you know a million dollar book deal. So it's it's the sheer fact that you're doing it, you're getting out there, you're putting yourself out there, mm -hmm. um, and 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 you're interacting with others, and you're genuinely becoming part of an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And it's a community that um, you might live in a small town, and that small town knows you. Just enlarge that small town. The rules are exactly the same whether you live in a small town or whether you operate in your pyjamas on the social web. It doesn't matter. You're still dealing with humans. Yeah, um, and, exactly. And I think, you know, if, if once you're on the web and you're doing things, um, you've also got to look at, well, how do people want to get information? How are people sourcing information? People's behaviours are changing. 
It's not just being on it for the heck of it. It's just that that's what people want. You want to be where they are. Um, the other thing is, you know, you're going to do a, a, a book trailer for your, you know, a video trailer for your book. Um, you know, it's good to have somewhere where you can house that, that people will come and see it. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I, I look more about the connection mm. and building the community. That, yeah. to me, is more. And, and if you've yeah. built that, you've earned the right, then you've also earned the right to ask people to help you, and they will if you've helped them. Yeah, exactly. But there is no formal return on investment calculation. I just don't think there can be one. Uh, you, you know, you can't say the f four and a half years of me blogging, podcasting, tweeting, all of this. I can't directly link it to my so-called success in quotation marks um, or my book sales or the fact that I'm a full-time on author entrepreneur. But I sure as hell know it's related. <laughs> You know what I mean? So, but people, well, it's, it's people little, want proof. Together. Yeah, people want yeah. proof that there's a return on investment, which unfortunately I don't think there is. Yes, there's a guy called Scott Monty who's head of social media for Ford and um, a leading light in the space. And albeit this is more business, but he's you know he says when he gets hit by the ROI question, he said um, he talks about yeah, there's about, there's ROI on putting your pants on in the morning. You know, you, you <laughs> what is the ROI? That's right. What is the ROI of putting your pants on in the morning? You know, you might not know what that is, but sure as hell, if you don't do it, you know there's something going to be wrong. So, uh, <laughs> that's a good one. That's quite but Australian. But I think that you can test. You can test things. You can build your email list. You can look at what works to open it. Um, you know, in terms of the open rate, what headings or what you, you can go down to the nth degree. You can look at traffic. You can. I, I can judge a lot of things. Not judge. I can uh, track a lot of things back to relationships on Twitter. I can. Mm. I can look at big speaking tours that have come through rekindled um, rekindled uh, relationships on Twitter. Mm. Uh, I now have people come to me in a business sense. They know what I stand for and who I am and they say, we want you to do this. Mm. So you're not actually pitching against anyone. Mm. That's in the business side of oh, things. Oh, no. I mean, like, I've uh, never, never pitched for speaking, ever. I just have always been asked to speak. So, I mean, that only comes from my blog only. The, the, how else yeah, could it have a podcast? But but it, it it comes from the connect the interconnectedness that you have across mm. your channels and your content. So again, it comes from content mm. and participation. Mm. Because if all you did was the content, but you weren't out there mm. um, connecting with people and, and and building relationships on on a micro level, uh, which is what Twitter does, for example, you might not have had that as much. Mm. So the two really do go hand in hand. And is, is it an effort? Absolutely it's an effort. Uh, is it fun? Absolutely it's yeah, fun. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, we should And, and I can, like there's a part of me that sometimes wishes I could just go away on a little farmhouse and write and, and that would be really cool as well. But I know that, you know, I'm not going to get a deal unless I've got a, a following or if I am going to self-publish and, you know, we're, as we've seen, people are doing that all the time now. Mm. Whether you're self-publisher or whether you're the publisher, it's up to you to do the marketing. Mm. It is. And so it's not going to land in your lap. So you need to have build up momentum to get to that mm. and therefore you need to look at the tools and, the, and, and the, the where, have the wherewithal to do it in advance of you actually doing it. You don't start book marketing now once the book's done. You no. do it before the book's done. Exactly. That's when your marketing starts. Well, I want to ask you about that because, um, you know, we're, we'll have to be winding up soon, but um, we could talk about this all day, I reckon. But um, you are, so you've got a, and you're with a traditional publisher, right, for, for micro domination? Yep, John Wiley and Sons. Okay, yep. so you're so with Wiley. So now there, well. Yeah, big publisher, Wiley, you know, good business publisher. I'm sure lots of people would love to be with Wiley. Now, um, so we've talked about, you know, building up, uh, you know, platform and all of that, and you've done all of that work. But what are, give us a couple of, things that you're doing for your own book promotion that uh, might help other people with some ideas that are, you know, might be a bit different or related to your PR side or, you know, what are some of the things you're doing? Well, it's, um, I feel like I've been marketing forever because I um, started writing it in August and it's funny, I'll just digress for two seconds because mm -hmm. it is a big publisher and people think publishers are really slow, etc. Um, and I, I know in some instances they can be, but I started writing in August last year and I had a, a, an advanced copy in my hand by the end of January. Mm, that's very Pretty good. quick. Yeah. Um, freaked me out, actually. It was a bit too much happening. Um, so it, it only launched um, only a few days ago, not too, about a, a week and a bit ago. Um, 
I, I had a, a launch event with a, the Social Media Club of Melbourne, of which I was a, uh, a member of and, and been part of over the journey. They've got a big database. Um, I pulled together a, um, in the interests of having good content, uh, I pulled together a, a panel which featured three uh, micro mavens that are mentioned in the book. Um, so Nicole Avery, Valerie Koo and Darren Rouse and they're all uh, Melbourne based and uh, actually Valerie lives in Melbourne and she lives in Sydney um, but we got them along to um, you know and we had a panel and that was the official launch of the book so we trended on Twitter that night um, you know a club like that attracts a lot of people who are very connected and very into Twitter and blogging etc. Oh, wait, let's uh, just, okay. just stop on that because that, what you've just said is really important. I get so many emails about book launches and people say, oh, we're just going to have a party. What you've done is basically provide an event that people want to go to anyway because you've got a panel on useful stuff with quite famous people in Australia, um, you know, generally and around the world in different ways. But, you know, that's what you've done is not go, here's my book. You've gone, here's a really useful event. Oh, and by the way, I've got a book. So I want people yes. to get that because that is yeah. that is the way to do a, a live book launch. Otherwise, it's actually not much point in bothering. So that's brilliant. Um, what were you going to say next? <laughs> uh, and well, the other thing is and tie, tying it back to the book and the themes of the book. So, you know, to my mind, and this comes back to content marketing, it's not about you, it's about the, the recipients. Yeah. So what's the value? So what does most people do when they have a book launch, or maybe it's about them and it's celebratory and all of that, which is fine. I, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I just decided to go with here's some really valuable content I think that we'll have through the course of the night, um, some great ideas you're going to get. Um, so it gave people an extra special reason to turn up, mm. uh, at a, a few hundred there, which is really good, trended on Twitter, and um, and as a result, uh, uh, Darren wrote something on um, Google Plus the next day um, and uh, because of something that sparked an idea in his head. He was asked the question about, um, I won't go too deep into it, but it's, he, 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 um, he looked at the micro mavens in the book and what was so special about them and what were they doing and I think that was a question on the night mm -hmm. and he'd thought about it and gone away and it percolated and he, he, wrote a, a, he writes sort of mini posts now on, on Google Plus um, and uh, he had put his themes out there and started talking about it. Now he's got in his circles on Google Plus, he's got something like 127,000 people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're the little ripple effects because it's, it's, once again, it's good content. So the book serves as a, a spark for further conversation. So I've got a book website, which is microdominationbook.com, and that's just a real quick and dirty, this is the book. You know, there's a couple of the chapters. There's a sampler there. Mm -hmm. um, some some of my footnotes from the book, which I couldn't put in the book. Um, so I put all the footnotes online and a bit of tweet love and a few prepackaged tweets and that sort of stuff. Um, prior to that, I've built um, one called um, microdomination.com, and that's a, an accompanying blog. So over the journey, I'd like to turn that into something bigger, yeah. um, and maybe a multi-author blog uh, of some description. And, and build an audience for that. So that's only really just been going um, since earlier in the year. Um, and that's to further explore the themes that are discussed in the book. Mm. Uh, so any of those elements that we've been speaking about, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, writing articles about it, we'll um, start a new podcast, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that is part of the marketing is to keep that, that sub-brand, I suppose, or the, the whole concept moving in another direction mm. and by the way here's the book that started it yeah so it's kind of a uh, doing the two things together um i have a blog so it's been well established prwarrior.com so i've been using that mm. uh using twitter a lot and really just giving it out giving the book to influentials as well and people that okay. i think will get something out of it um you know a lot of those people who again it's the same community that we've been around for five mm. six years and they've got big followings on Twitter. Um, you know, there's been podcasts that I've done that yeah. service different areas of the market. Uh, so we're into the traditional media at the moment. Right, I was going to ask that because everything you've talked about so far has been kind of online. Have we given yeah. up on traditional media or are you doing that too? Uh, 
No, no, that's just started. Right? Literally, the book's, you know, it, it hasn't been around for all that long. So um, that's starting. I'm going I'm, I'm on um, TV uh, next next week yeah. um, How on did the business you get channel. That? How did you get TV? People uh, who want to uh, know. Actually, that, that, that came directly to me. So that is the book indirectly. So that's about personal branding. But, of course, because I'm the author of the book, that makes sense. Mm. So mm. That's, that, that's once again, I, think, I don't think we talk, sort of touched on that. I was going to, when you talk about having a platform, um, the media, another part of it is that you attract the media to you. They can come and check you out and say, okay, you're bona fide. You mm. are an author. You are doing this. You are... You know, you are who you say you are because if you if they look and they can't find you, you don't exist. Mm. Um, so traditional media, absolutely, we're doing it. I've um, by the time this comes out, we'll probably uh, be in Life Hacker, for example, <laughs> and that's the hybrid. I think that's the real good area. Um, blogs, I think, are important. Podcasts, I'll do those all the time. But the hybrid media is is a cross between a traditional. It, well, Life Hacker and, and um, Huffington Post. Post. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're not, they're, they've got no legacy. They're, they've got no um, legacy um, systems from being a, an old world media company, um, but they're, made, they're started by people who are, understand journalism and the media. So they're online beasts, but they've got, you know, a little bit of, they've got a digital heart, but they've still got a bit of traditional media um, experience behind them, and they and and obviously your traditional media, then is your hard copy magazines, and then whatever they bring online as well. So it's out to those people. Uh, we're getting interest. Um, interviews are starting to tickle along, uh, and all of that's important. And the next few weeks are going to be uh, pretty crucial pretty for that. Busy. Yeah, and and what's interesting there, you know, uh, is that you're published by Wiley big publisher, but you, you're basically doing the vast majority of this work yourself. Uh, no, I hope I didn't give that away. Uh, the publisher is, the publicist that the publisher is working on that. We work together um, and obviously it's my space, um, so I'm happy to be involved. Mm -hmm. And I must mm -hmm. say, I really have empathy, because it's second nature to me, but I, I do have empathy for authors who have never been in this space and all of a sudden they have to start thinking about media plans in conjunction with the publicist. Uh, because, you know, they're, 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 they'll have other books come along and, and then, you know, it's my turn now, but then in a couple of weeks um, maybe it's someone else's turn. So that's when you take pull up the reins. And because the book then is not so new, mm -hmm. then you need to find different ways to get in. So the other day I was, I was interviewed on um, one of the big radio station in uh, Perth and um, the story is not about the book. The story is about how small businesses are usual, using social media. Mm. So I can talk on that, and that was research that came out. So we shot the research out mm. um, to this um, to this radio station, and said I can comment on that. And by the way, I write this is my book, and so I think that that's something authors need to um, understand, particularly if they're an expert in a particular space, is that. Um, they don't necessarily have to talk about the book. There's only going to be a really short window when you talk about the book, mm. but you will always be the author of this book and that is your credibility. Mm. Fantastic. Right. So where can people find you and the book online? Um, okay. So the, the, just the straight book site is microdominationbook.com um, and the, the accompanying blog with that is microdomination.com and uh, my website, which is the jump off for everything, is... Uh, Trevor Young dot me, M E. Fantastic. Well, thanks ever so much for your time, Trevor. That was brilliant. Thank you, Joanna. Cheers.